Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Black to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make your very own wire wrapped earrings in this style as well as the little ones that I'm wearing here. So let's get started. So at the time of recording, I've just finished making these earrings hanging out in one of my patron exclusive live streams. Shameless plug, check out the links to Patreon down below if you're interested in coming and hanging out. Um, <laughs> but Oh, I had so much fun making them, you guys, and I wanted to make a video for everybody, for free, that you could see how we went about making these. So, for the materials that we're using, again, all of this will be listed down in the video description. I am using 16 gauge bare copper wire, and the two lengths that I have cut are about 8 or 9 inches long. Um, also, I've made some ear wires out of 20 gauge wire. And we're going to be using just a touch of the 26 gauge. Now, for the ear, oops, didn't mean to bump the camera. For the ear hooks, I like to use the copper core wire. It's got, it's by Parawire. They're awesome. Um, it has this non-tarnished finish that it won't turn your ear holes green. Um, I'm very sensitive to that and I'd just rather not. So I use the enameled on that part. But for the rest of the earrings, I am using just bare copper which is very nice from parawire it's dead soft it's like butter to work with i just love it um but we will be oxidizing it so you can color match your ear hook wire to whatever you're going to be using or you could make the entire earring out of the same tone of enameled wire so to make these ear hooks i just shaped a little loop on my mandrel pliers and then I shaped the remainder of the ear hook around about a size 6 on my ring mandrel. And then I open up the end just a little bit. That way I don't want it poking me you know, behind my ear whenever I'm wearing it. And I'm going to come through, in caution, loud noises, and hammer just lightly, just enough that our very soft wire will hold its shape a little better. And while this is optional, I do actually highly recommend hammering on the 20 gauge uh, just so that it'll hold its shape. I have a filthy work surface today, <laughs> uh, but you know, what's new? Um, so I am going to just be demonstrating how to make one of the two ear or of the earrings, and then but we're going to be talking each step of the way. Um, you know, actually, I was going to try to just do one to make it like a fast tutorial. Um, I'm going to do both of them just because sometimes it can be really hard to get your earrings to match. So if, you, if you're not new to wire wrapping, like if you've already got the hang of it, please feel free to fast forward and stuff. But my heart is always, always with the beginner. So I would include all the steps. I'm using these curved nylon gel pliers, so like a bracelet shaping nylon gel to give a little bit of a curve. Just doing both the wires at once. And then I'm going to be using, oh by the way, we're using flat nose, curved nylon, mandrel, wire snips, round nose, I have like a hammer, our ring mandrel is very helpful, might be using our bent nose. All the tools and materials should be listed down below. So that being said, Oh, also, uh, like in, these are like 13 by 8, I think, faceted bralettes. You could use whatever kind of bead you want. When I come in, round about the center, and bend against the curve that we've just made. Because I like the shape that that makes. And now, we're going to come through using our ring mandrel on the thickest part of the ring mandrel, actually. I'm holding that right there. I'm just gonna hold it stable, and then I'm gonna curve this part around like this. Excuse me. I'm having a bit of an allergy fit today. During today's live stream, we went and rolled in the leaves in the backyard. So now I'm gonna come in with our other wire, and you can see on this side, we had crossed this way. I'm going to try to do it opposite 
on the other one. So they'll end up looking like that. So you can kind of see how they're mirror image of each other instead of duplicates. So now I'm going to take, and I do recommend, like I really like to do my wrapping whenever I'm trying to make pieces symmetrical, I do them simultaneously. So I'm going to grip right here so that it's right in like the kind of center line of our piece and using the smallest tip of the mandrel pliers and I'm going to bend this one around and also just for clarity's sake I think I already said it but I'm going to repeat myself this is 16 gauge wire you could use 18 gauge but I really like the the heft of the uh, 16 some 14 gauge would look wicked cool uh, as well I do think so you can see I've shaped like that <laughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to flip my pliers around to keep the jaw of them out of the way of where the wire is going. And bring that one all the way around to the front. And then I'm going to whoop, bring this one all the way down. There we go. Around on the back side. Because part of what I like about this earring style is it's double sided. So you could make this a very long, you can make this just a pendant too, by the way, um, but you could make it very long so there's a lot of twist and movement and it's just as interesting from the front as it is from the back. So now that we have this, while I'm still holding it, I'm going to cinch this side around like this here. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cinch this side around through here. And I want where they're coming out to be kind of equidistant. And again, you can see if we don't have our mandrel pliers through there, oh, oh, there's a little bit of wibble wobbling. So don't hesitate to hold them nice and steady. Just like that. And now we're going to do that same thing on the other side. Gripping along the center line. Wrenching this around. Wrenching this around. Flipping our pliers so that the nose isn't in the way. Bring that around. Bring that around down. And now from here, again, if I'm on the front side right here, I want to bring it around <clears throat> the back just because it kind of makes sense to me that way. And uh, if you've watched some of my videos before, you'll already know this, but if you haven't, welcome. Thank you for watching. I really hope that this is helpful to you, but also any of... Uh, any of the tutorials of mine that you follow along with, please feel free to to sell whatever you make in your Etsy shop, at craft shows, like, um, like I, I get asked, uh, a lot of people contact me and they're like, hey, can I sell this? And I'm like, yeah, do it. Go for it. Make the money. Buy the beads. Do the thing. Um, I do ask that people pass along, like if somebody comes to your booth or comes to you and says, hey, how do you do this? You know, let them know. Be like, hey, you know, I, I do it like this. Like, spread the learning. Uh, but yeah, because I feel like you bought the beads, you bought the wire, you did the work. It's your fingers that are hurting at the end of the project. So, this is yours now. Go forth and, and do the thing. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah. They're nice and mirror image. Double checking myself every step of the way if I can manage it. Ah, uh, this one's looking a little shorter and stubbier than I would have liked, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here now and trim these uh, wires to be... Oop, oh, I hope it didn't land in my coffee. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> trim them to match each other's lengths because this could quite possibly... Ouch. 
be the last time that we have these pieces side by side like this. So now we can make sure that those are nice and even. The next step that we're gonna do is find the end of our wire. This is 26 gauge. A 24 gauge would have been very appropriate for this as well. Uh, though you could have also used a 20 gauge wire. The main thing that I'm looking for in these situations is I want to make sure that the wire fits through my bead. Actually, let's use a 20 gauge wire. Let me go rummaging. I just want to see how it's different. Because on this one here, you can see I used the 26 gauge. And while I really like that, I'm very interested to see how it will look with the 20 gauge. So I'm going to cut off two lengths that are about, oh, six or seven inches. There we go. And again, this is more of that bare copper from parawire.com. And before we move on to the next step, I'm going to hammer this with some nice texture. So I'm going to start with, and again, I'm holding these so that they'll like line up with each other, hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to start with the flat side of my hammer, and then I'm going to work my way around over to the rounded side to add some texture. And so now you can see just the flash that we get by hammering the wire, because that's completely optional. I just like the way it looks. Now also we could use, here I have a much heavier hammer. This one's a 13 ounce. I don't actually know what the ounceage is on this one off the top of my head, but this one's, I mean, it feels almost double the weight. Yeah, I really love the hammer texture that I get from that hammer. Hmm. So yeah, I think that's going to be what we do, and I'm going to hammer that on this one as well. And I really like the way that looks. And you don't need to like whack the crap out of it. Like, I mean, you can if you want to. Just hit it till you're happy. Um, but, uh, I don't want to get any, like, pinching or anything like that. Like, let's see if maybe I can show you with a piece of scrap. What did I even do with my scrap? Oh, I pinged it everywhere. Oh, I don't even know what I, I can't even find it now. Oh, here it is. Okay, so whenever I'm hammering, let's zoom in and maybe I can get a better look for you guys. Um, I don't want to hit too far off to the edge because that's going to give us like some weird pinching. And I don't want to hammer it to be so thin that it becomes brittle and possibly easy to break. So, but you can see just the thickness change that we got there. That's significant. So you don't want to, uh, less is sometimes more whenever you're hammering. Okay, so we've done our hammering, and this next technique will be the same whether you're using 20 or 26 gauge, just whatever gauge you choose. Uh, here I have some little 3 millimeter. I actually think these are plated steel. If I could get my hands on some bare copper I would have gone with that but this is what I have in my in, like mustache so and again you want to make sure that they'll thread up onto your wire so I'm doing three of these three millimeter beads threading on I don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly but this is like a green chalcedony chalcedony I don't know it's a very beautiful green faceted stone and I love it um I just don't know how to say words uh so, and now we're going to thread on three more. There's one, two, and three. 
and you could use seed beads you could use I actually have two different kinds here so I prefer a nice seamless bead but these two here on the side you can kind of see have a little seam on them that's okay but I'm gonna bring this and set it so that these beads are sitting inside the uh, the inner diameter of our pendant holding everything in place with my thumb I'm gonna kind of just wrench this around and I'm just doing one wrap around to start with and now I'm gonna keep those beads cinched down because I don't want a lot of movement and like I don't want all my beads rolling around loose everywhere and I'm gonna do a bend and I'm gonna bring this through I actually think I prefer the 20 gauge because with the with the thinner wires um, if you pulled on this part it would like loosen up a little bit but with the 20 gauge it's really holding its place so I'm gonna do oh, let's say <clears throat> there's three let's do five wraps four and bring it around against once more for five and I'm not gonna trim it yet cuz I don't know if I want to do a spiral or not um, we can always decide that you know in a minute so there's three four and if it's hard on your fingers or the wires a little short this is where I like to come in with my bent nose pliers and just, you know, why make it be harder on yourself than it has to be? Ooh, I, I love that. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, I still don't know yet if I want, <clears throat> if I want a little spiral off of each end or not. Or if I want to coil further. We shall see. So now with these guys, I'm going to take this one here and bend it across. I'm going to use my bent nose pliers to give it a good holding on to. And then I'm going to bend this one around that way. Could have honestly done with them being a little bit longer, but this is what I ended up with. So maybe you might want to experiment with having your wires be longer or shorter or, you know, see what you like. So apparently all of my pliers are magnetized. And there is steel wool just sticking to all of them. So that's nice. <laughs> yeah, if, if I had used a longer wire, we would have been able to get a much more substantial um, spiral going. Yep. So let's see, maybe if we undo that part instead of it taking up additional wire this is another thing that I do love about para wire is the para wire is soft enough that you can experiment and kind of be like mm, do I like that nope I don't like that I'm gonna put it back the way we had it whoopsie So yeah, just pretend with me that we had a longer wire and could make a longer spiral. So I'm just going to grab it and spiral it on in. And then I'm going to take both of these and press them in just a little bit more. And actually, let's try oops, being a little bit different since I didn't give myself enough wire. Let's see, maybe if I give myself even less, we might be able to make it to where the one spirals off to one side, and then the other, and it's less of a spiral and more like just a decorative loop. But then, when you smush them, they kind of go like that. Ta-da! Yeah. So if you had more wire, you just kind of stack them that way, or if you have less wire, you do them this way. See? Bob Ross would be like, 
Y'all bitches got this. <laughs> I actually did pop off so I never say that. Um, <laughs> but it, the, the, the vibe is the same. <laughs> Y'all got this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to do just a few more coils to see if I like it on this side. So that would be six, seven. And it can be kind of hard to smush them. So you can just smush. So there's eight. Nine. You know, I liked it at just five, maybe. Do I? I don't know. I really like that at nine, too. Hmm. Variety makes life spicy. So why not try it? And ten. Now I get to decide which side's the front. I think that side's the front. So I'm gonna... Well, that's the wrong side. So I'm gonna snip this. And I'm gonna give it a smush. I'm just smushing and rounding because I want to make sure that there's no little pokey bit. And now I'm gonna do five more wraps on this side before we do this same exact thing for the other earring. And again, just in case I wandered out of frame as I do or something, or you just wanna do it again with me, I am gonna do that in real time. So please feel free to skip forward or fast forward or something. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's nine and this will be 10. I'm gonna give it a snip. And a smoosh. There we go. All right. So yeah, let's do that on the other side. So let's try to get this one in close up. So we have our wire. We have our 20 gauge wire threading on three three millimeter beads. One, two, three, maybe. Sliding on our faceted pretty stone. I think it's chalcedony. I don't know. Technically, all words are made up anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's pretty though, isn't it? I like that green. One, two, three more. Three millimeter beads. And I think it would look really pretty too if you did like a four, three, two millimeter, like kind of gradiating down. Um, like just, I mean, possibilities are endless here, y'all. Like, y'all are some of the most creative people I've ever had the honor of working with. So I'm sure you guys are gonna come up with some wild variations of this. So placing this like here, I'm gonna do the one wrap on this side. Bringing it around. Sometimes if you feel like your grip strength is kind of weak um, or not as strong as you would like or like if you're, you're not feeling the strength in your hands, go with a thinner gauge. The 26 gauge is a lot easier. It almost feels like pulling a stiff thread sometimes as opposed to this 20 gauge. You kind of have to put a little bit of force behind. So I'm just scooching these up like that because I want a little bit of that curve. Never hesitate to, even if you're checking two or three times every single step, do it. You know, there's no reason not to. Double check your work, make sure you're confident with your bead placement and your wire and all that. So bringing this around. Just one, two, three. Excuse me. Four. Five. Six, seven, trying really hard to place each one right next to the other. Oh, I lost count. <laughs> oh no. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then nine and ten. Also, just in case some of y'all didn't know, YouTube does have an option where you can put uh, episode, like, um, whatever this is that you're watching, videos on two times speed 
and then you get to hear people talk like squirrels and see things happen very fast and all that so okay so 10 reps on that side 10 on this one so that's that's our third and i count by the the little bumps so it's one two three four and i also count by the bumps that are on the side that is going to be the front so five yes grabbing bring it around grab bring it around so that's six seven eight nine and one last one and ten give it a snip and a swoosh man i feel like i'm going to be picking steel wool off of my tools for the rest of ever uh not my favorite way of polishing so huzzah um i'm pretty pleased with that actually and we could even go a simpler route and have these just be bound off a little bit tighter or just snip it and have like a loop on the front and back and just um use some 20 gauge to bind it together so there's no movement like lots and lots of different options here y'all so we're gonna bring this side around boop, like that and bring this side around boop, like that I'm actually gonna trim this one to match that one in relation to the rest of the weaving now you can always trim off just a bit and then be like, you know, I need to trim off a hair more than that. And then, in that way, you know, you're not cutting off, uh-oh, way too much. Grabbing as close to the tip of my pliers and as close to the tip of the wire as I can. Bring this around. Just like that. And then I'm going to bring this one around. Just like that. There we are. And again, we can position these. Oh, now these didn't come out like the other one, did they? My spirals are smaller. Uh -oh. Okay, let's see if we can open this back up. I'm just a professional person bumping into things, pretending like I know what I'm doing. So yeah, we just open them back up a bit. That, that'll be fine. Yeah, just opening up that spiral a bit and then cinching it down on a part of the nose of the pliers a little farther up you know what they're sisters not twins we can deal hooray i actually really like that i can dig it okay next step we're done with all the hammering and stuff so i'm gonna move this off to the side and now we are going to go get some hot water, just as hot as it'll come out of the sink. This is a plastic container that I use specifically for oxidizing in liver of sulfur. Um, and you could fairly well just leave your project nice and bright and shiny, but I really love how it looks personally with a nice, a nice oxidation and then, you know, uh, kind of polishing it back up. So I'm going to use just a bloop just a little drop of this liver of sulfur extended life gel I like this stuff so much better than the old chunks of liver of sulfur that I used to use don't eat it don't drink it don't breathe it if you can manage it um like don't be like huffing the fumes or something uh it mostly it smells like butts like super rad um <laughs> it is sulfur after all and I just use these copper tongs you can see that's a pretty intense yellow it's actually one of my favorite colors of um, yellow, actually, this kind of like toxic yellow. Um, putting that back over there. And we are just going to set. Oof, I just got a big old whiff. Um, our pieces in there. And you could just dip them in real quick. 
You can see it's starting to oxidize already. I like a pretty dark patina though. Um, so I do have though this little jar here that's just distilled water with baking soda. And this is what I'm going to be dropping our pieces into to stop the uh, reaction. And you can see that's really darkening down now. I'm going to leave it just a little bit longer because I want a very deep, there we go. That's perfect. I'm going to set this off to the side. I have a spot on my porch that animals can't get to that I set this to just let it like stink itself out. Um, and then I dump the, like after it's, I don't know, uh, something science happens and um, it stops being so darn sulfury, but then I just dump it on my compost pile. Okay. So we've hopefully stopped the reaction in the baking soda water. Again, I am not much of a scientist. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to come in with, I've got a green scrubby here. And I wanted to try just using the surface of this. I wonder if I just cut like a little bit off because I used steel wool, but oh boy, that's just the worst. Um, like, I really did not enjoy... Mostly, like, the steel wool worked fantastically, honestly. It's just the cleanup afterwards. Whereas this uh, green scrubby material seems to be doing the trick just fine. And I'm just coming through. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit, if we can. And I mostly just want to polish up the high points of our project. And so you can compare the unpolished with the polished. And this is actually a little bit of a, like a nice like matte finish. Um, this is not the super shiniest metal I've ever seen, but I kind of like it. That kind of dull, warm glow of a matte finished copper. So this is a very accessible, very affordable option. Now this isn't one of those like scotch Bright pads that has like a chemical embedded in it. It's just this plastic mesh. But again, for a side by side, it's not too shabby. Or you could leave it completely oxidized, and I think that's very pretty too. So let's try it with the steel wool just to see if there is a difference. So this is the double zero very fine steel wool. Oh yeah, okay, there is a difference. <laughs> so you can see how that's bringing it to a nice, much higher shine. I like to wear a glove when I'm working with steel wool because I detest how it feels on my skin. Um, that's okay though. Okay, so yeah. Like you can tell with the light reflection off of the high points on the little spirals. The camera is not picking up on it particularly well, but there is a difference there. Um, so that's something that I recommend. These materials are easy, accessible enough, and quite affordable. So uh, I recommend testing out and seeing for yourself which you prefer. Yeah, that brings it to a nice, nice high shine. And from here, you could use like polishing cloths or 
uh, a Dremel or for Fordham. Is that what they're called? Fordham? I don't know. They're it's basically a Dremel, but some other brand. Um, like a flex shaft with a polishing head attachment or something, and really get this like crazy silly shiny. Um, I'm pretty happy though with just the organic look of just a hand polish with steel wool. So yeah, let's polish up this other one just to get it to match. Do y'all have any tips on polishing with steel wool um, to get it to be less like messy? Um, cause I'm still, uh, I've worked the, primarily through most of my career as a designer with enameled metals, just cause they're affordable, they're easy to work with, um, I like them. Uh, so I'm just, after like a decade and a half, getting into doing some of my own polishing and stuff, so I'm still quite new to this. So I'd love to hear any advice that y'all might have. Cool. So I'm gonna pop this back into its bin along with the glove. I just kind of keep this neoprene glove in there. And I'm going to try to catch the bulk of it. I mean, that's a lot of crud to um, have to deal with. So now we get to attach our ear hooks. And oops. Open that up, thread it on, close that on up, and you could do a wrapped loop, you could do like beadling extensions. I, I do think these would make lovely pendants. Thread that back on. And you could use in a rubber ear back if you wanted. But again, very, very pleased with how these came out. And for an alternate style, we could try making some with bigger spirals, which I really like those ones too. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. I really do hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I do love to hear from y'all. Uh, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to participate in my behind the scenes stuff and my patron exclusive live streams and our craft along kits and all the different things that we're doing here at Back to Earth Creations, please consider joining us over on Patreon. There'll be links for that stuff down below, as well as our Discord. Um, and I don't, just a bunch of stuff. Just go check it out. This is the obligatory end of YouTube video begging for likes. Um, please like, share, subscribe, ring my bell, all that stuff. Cause we do this for a living and what we do would not be possible without y'all. So we really appreciate it. And, um, also I'd love to hear requests for future tutorials. If you guys have something in particular that you're wanting to learn or want to deep dive into a little bit more and kind of mess about and see what we can come up with. So Thanks again for hanging out, and until next time, happy crafting. Bye! <laughs>